Hello everyone, today I am going to show you how to create snapshot of a scratch hog. A snapshot captures the complete state of a scratch hog at a specific point in time. It includes data, metadata and also the installed packages. You can use these snapshots to recreate the scratch hogs with preserved state whenever you need. In today's session, I am going to take you through the process of creating and managing scratch hogs using the snapshots. I am Satya Sekar, a developer advocate with Salesforce. Let's start by exploring the different ways to create scratch hogs. One method is to build a scratch hog with your own definition file to meet your basic project needs. However, this definition file can become complex when you try to replicate the features of a production org. Another method is to capture the baseline configuration settings and features of a production org in an org shape. You can then use this org shape to create scratch orgs using the Salesforce CLI. This approach is helpful for creating consistent environments across teams. For more information, you can watch the quick take on working with scratch org shapes, which I will link in the description below. This third option is to create a snapshot from a scratch org. A snapshot is a copy of the scratch hog at a specific point in time. It not only captures the configuration settings and features, but also includes data and installed packages. We can then use these snapshots to create new scratch hogs. In the rest of this session, we will dive deeper into how to work with snapshots. The first step is to enable scratch hog snapshots in your DevHub org. Next, we need to assign permissions to non-admin snapshot users. By default, admins can create and manage snapshots. We then capture the scratch hog snapshot using the Salesforce CLI, giving the snapshot a specific name. The fourth step is to add the snapshot name to the scratch hog definition file. Finally, we create the scratch hog. Now, let's look at each of these steps in detail with a demo. I am in Visual Studio Code environment, which is connected to a project. Let's start by examining our current environment. I can use CLI and type SF org list. You can see I have a DevHub org with the alias my DevHub and a scratch org with the alias dh dev org. We can log into the DevHub org and check the active scratch orgs using the CLI command SF org open. Once logged in, you can use the app launcher to view the list of active scratch orgs. Here you will see the list of scratch orgs. You can click this number to see the scratch org details. Let's look at the slides once. The scratch org is created using the DevHub org and the first step is to enable snapshots in this DevHub org. Let's proceed with that. Let's click on setup and search for scratch. You can enable Scratch Org Snapshots feature here. Before you enable the Scratch Org Snapshot feature, make sure to check the note. It states that you can't enable this setting until DevHub is enabled in the org. Additionally, once you enable the setting, it cannot be disabled. So make sure that you want to enable Snapshots and enable it. Now let's go ahead and enable it. The next step is to assign permissions to non-admin snapshot users in this DevHub. In this demo, I'm using a developer edition and I'm logged in as an admin, so I can create snapshots by default. If you need to enable permissions for other users, you can follow the steps outlined in the Scratch Org Snapshot section of the Salesforce DX Developer Guide. The next step is to create a Scratch Org Snapshot. But before we proceed, Let's review the current state of this source scratch org. I'm back in VS Code and will open the scratch org by clicking the open org button. Once in the org, I'll click the gear icon and select setup. Let's search for installed packages. And you'll see a package named Dreamhouse LWC is installed. Now let's examine the app installed as part of this package. This is the Dreamhose app, which is used to manage properties and brokers. 
Let's open the property explorer where you can see a list of properties. You can select one of the properties to view its details. You can see the details in the property detail page. Next, let's edit the page and add the property map lighting component. Let's save it and return to the property page by clicking the back button. You should now see the property's location displayed on a map. Let's also create a new property. Let's call it Town Mansion and add some additional details and save it. Okay, let's go back and see what is the next step. The third step is creating a snapshot of the scratch org. We want to capture the current state of the scratch org, including all of the changes we have just made in the org. We'll use the CLI to create the snapshot. Let's go back to VS Code and do it. Let's use the command SF or create snapshot to create this snapshot. We'll give a name for the snapshot. Let's call it DH snapshot. We need to specify the source org, which in our case is DH dev org. Next, we provide the target dev hub org name, which is my dev hub org where the snapshot will be created. Finally, we'll add a description for this snapshot. Good, let's run the command. After executing the command, you'll see the snapshot name and its status. Initially, the status will be in progress. Over a period of time, the status changes to active. You can check the status of the request using the sforg get snapshot command by specifying the snapshot name. Over time, you'll see that the snapshot status changes to active. Now let's move to the slide to review what's the next step. The next step is to create a scratch of definition file and add the snapshot name to it. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll start by copying the existing scratch of definition file and renaming it to something like dh snapshot scratch dev dot json. Now let's make the necessary changes. We'll keep the org name as it is, and we are going to use the snapshot instead of the edition and specify the snapshot name. We can't specify the features as they are inherited from the scratch org snapshots. So let's remove this section. If you prefer, you can overwrite settings of the snapshot, but for brevity, I'll remove these unnecessary settings and keep the file as simple as possible. Let's go ahead and save the file. Let's go back and refer to see what is the next step. The next step is to create the scratch org. Let's go back to VS Code. We can create the scratch org using the SF or create scratch command. Let's specify the path to the scratch org definition file which in our case is config slash dh snapshot scratch dev dot json. We'll also assign an alias to our scratch org. For example, let's say dh test org. Since creating a scratch org can take some time, we suggest increasing the wait time to prevent the command from timing out. I am setting it to 10 minutes. Don't forget to specify the target dev hub as well. Let's run the command and you'll see that the scratch org is created within few minutes. We have completed all five steps and created the scratch org in the dev hub org. Let's now check the newly created scratch org to verify that it has the installed package, data and metadata from the source scratch org. Let's list the orgs and you'll see the newly created scratch org listed there. Let's now open the newly created scratch org using the SF org open command. Okay, first let's check the installed packages. You'll see that the Dreamhouse LWC package is installed by default. Next, let's open the Dreamhouse app and examine a property record. You should see that it includes the map component. Now let's search for the property that we created last. Here you can find town mansion listed. 
These are just a few examples. You can also experiment with other changes such as adding a new field to the property object and so on. One important point to remember is to update your snapshot as needed. Delete any outdated snapshots and create new ones when necessary. In this video, we explored how Scratchog snapshots allow you to capture the complete state of a Scratchog including data, metadata and installed packages. This capability enables you to use specific org states with data for rapid testing and development. You can find the links to the resources in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video if you found it helpful. Thank you.